Today we're going to be looking at the five best outfielders to pick up right now. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Les Alex with FullCountMedia.com and like I said in the intro, today we're going to be taking a look at the top five picks for outfielders for this coming baseball season. I'm really, really excited for this one because there are some excellent players on this list. If you guys like this video, the number one way to help support the content here on the channel is to hit that like button. And if you're new here, make sure to smash that subscribe button because I'm coming out with new sports and sports card content almost every single day here on the channel. I'm really excited though. There are, like I said, a lot of awesome outfielders to choose from. It was really hard whittling this list down to only five. There are guys on this list that underperformed in 2020, but there's also guys on the list that did well, but I think could go even higher as the hobby heats up the closer we get to the MLB season. I'm really, really excited though. If you guys want to check out the other videos in this series, I did every single position and I'm really, really proud of the series. If you guys want to check it out, they're all in a playlist right up there so you can check that out. But with all that fun stuff out of the way, let's get into this one. At number five, it's going to be the Washington Nationals 22 year old outfielder Juan Soto. All right, so at number five, like I said, 2018, this is the tops update. Juan Soto batting. This is the paper PSA 10 here on Card Ladder. And as you can see, this graph, it has started to pick up some traction here recently over the last six months. And actually, it might be at its all time high. It actually is at its all time high. However, I do believe that this card will follow the same trajectory as the Chrome. Now, if you guys have been paying attention to the baseball card market, the Topps Chrome card of this exact same one has gone absolutely nutty, hitting prices of about $500. I usually don't like to focus on cards that expensive because this channel is a little bit budget friendly, but I really think there is opportunity with this card as soon as the season starts, the hype and the excitement for the season, we're getting towards the first pitch. I think this card is going to just gradually go up. And if he has a season that he is capable of, the sky is the absolute limit. Last season, he had 13 home runs, hit 351, had an OPS of 1.1. And I mean, he's just an absolute stud. He is pound for pound, the best pure hitter, pure young hitter in baseball, in my opinion. I'm really, really excited though for Juan Soto. Obviously, you can take a look at this graph and it shows the tail of the tape. It really does. We had the lull right there after the season, but recently it has been picking up traction. But as I said, I really believe in him. I think of all of the players on this list, he is the best pure hitter. Now, you can say what you want, but he's only 22 years old, guys. In 10 years, he'll be in the prime of his career still. So what does his prime look like if this slash line of 490 on base percentage, guys, 490 on base percentage, 695 slugging, that's insane. And he's only 22. Think about his numbers when he's in the prime of his career. Obviously, this is kind of a medium risk, high reward here, just because he is so young and he's so early into his career. I think if he can stay healthy and he can continue to be the player that he's shown so far, I mean, he could be one of the best hitters in baseball history. Now, I know that's very, very extreme to say, but man, he's got the tools, he's got the skills, and I'm really, really excited for this Juan Soto. But let's take a look at this graph a little bit more in depth. The start price, you could have got this thing way back on 810 of 2020 for $200. The most recent sale and its current high is $314. Its low point right after the season ended was 161. And overall, a growth rate of 51%. If I was a betting man, I would put my chips on Juan Soto. All right, and now at number four, it's going to be Atlanta Braves' very own Ronald Acuna Jr. 
The Ronald Acuna I'm going to be looking at, there are a bunch of really, really good ones. You obviously have the Bat Down. That one's gone pretty crazy recently. You have the Topps Chrome. But the one I'm looking at is the 2018 Topps Update Bat in Blue Jersey. So this is known as the Bat Up. You can take a look at it here. Really nice looking card. Really, really clean. Obviously, the Braves are among the top contenders in the NL. They got a really, really nice core. And I really expect that pitching staff to come back strong when they get Soroka back. But last season, as a lot of you know, he did struggle. He started the season off extremely rough, hitting below the Mendoza line. He was able to bring it back up. His batting average was 250. He hit 14 home runs, which to give you kind of comparison, Freddie Freeman won the MVP and had 14 home runs. So there's something to be said for that. He has 29 home runs last year and an OPS of 987, not too shabby, a career OPS of a 909. Now, if you compare him, as a lot of people do, with Juan Soto, I think that he is the overall around better talent. And then Juan Soto is just so gifted at the plate, it's ridiculous. But let's take a look at this graph. As you can see, it's been pretty flat for the last six months. You could have got it on 8-10-2020 for $202. The most recent sale was for $189 and then the high price was $242. So it has kind of chilled out recently and actually it is under the price you could have got it for a year ago. So its growth rate is negative 1.98, so negative two. I really do believe that the Braves are gonna be right in the thick of things in October and I do think that they could be a potential dark horse to win. He was a rookie of the year. He's a two-time silver slugger and an all-star. So I'm really, really excited. Everybody knows who Ronald Acuna Jr. is. At the start of the 2020 season, he was basically the talk of everything. And then of course, Tatis and Juan Soto started to go off, which means the eyeballs kind of shifted away and they've kind of stayed away. But I expect him to have another great season this year and bounce back from his uh, kind of slow start last year. But I'll have to put him at number four on today's list. So next up is a guy I don't talk a lot about on this channel, but I am today because I do think he's a good buy right now for a potential short-term flip. It's going to be Aaron Judge. All right, so Aaron Judge is a guy I get a lot, and I do mean a whole heck of a lot of questions about. Because he's on the Yankees, his fan base and his marketability is probably better than any other player on this list. However, I say this time after time, my biggest concern with Aaron Judge is, of course, his durability. I mean, the guy is an absolute walking, talking injury report. However, I do think it is probably smart to buy him, hold him, see what he starts to do. He always gets out of the gate pretty quick. He's pretty quick starter. So for those reasons, I like to pick him up in the off season, wait till his prices go up and then sell him and wait. And hopefully he doesn't get injured before you sell him. I'm not a hater or anything on Aaron Judge. I know a lot of people think that, but that's not it at all. It's honestly, just his injuries and I'm not looking to hold somebody long term that has a laundry list of injuries but I do like him as a quick flip if that's what you're trying to do now if you're a Yankees fan and you truly believe in him by all means I'm not saying don't invest in a guy you like but personally my opinion on him buy him in the offseason when he's low and then sell him as the season starts because again he usually does start off pretty pretty hot He's been a rookie of the year, a silver slugger, a two-time all-star. Last season, he hit nine home runs, 257, and an OPS of 891. And again, a lot of that is because he was injured last year, unfortunately. Let's take a look, though, at this sales chart. This is the last three months. You can see it started at 91, and its current price is 153 and that is its high price. However, if we take a look at the six month trend, you can see it's way down from where it was on 8, 10, 2020. So in August, this thing was at $235. Guys, it only takes one big game from these 
high profile stars to really, really jump in price. I think the market is going to be even more reactionary this season because as we're seeing, some of the folks from other card markets, so basketball specifically, but also football, are starting to buy into the baseball market because they see the prices and they're not nearly at the level. Now, I would make the argument though, that's mostly because baseball is a North American sport and that's where most of the investors and buyers and collectors are. So I would make that argument, but in terms of flipping and making money, I think you gotta look at basically any New York Yankee that is a all-star level talent. And Aaron Judge is the exact blueprint, minus the injuries, of what a top level Yankee all-star potential hall of fame kind of guy is he's tall he hits ham sandwiches and he's just a great ambassador for the game i really wish he wouldn't get injured as much because he is the exact kind of guy that i would like to invest in he's swaggy and he's very fun to watch play the game but his injuries just make me afraid long term but again this isn't necessarily a long term list it's just who i would like to pick up um, you look at that growth rate right there, negative 35% in the last six months. I mean, you want to buy in the dips, right? So I really like him. I'm putting him in number three. Next up, it's going to be the Phillies polarizing character in the outfield, Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper is a guy that is very polarizing. I'm very, very aware of it. Now, obviously, he's on the Phillies. The Phillies fans are absolutely nuts. They love their stars. This is the 2012 Tops update. One thing I will say though about investing in Bryce Harper, there are a lot of cards of his. You could go with the foot up. That's the one I actually have. I'm looking at this though because last year this thing did spike a lot. But if we take a look at the three month trend, it started at 130. It's currently at 186. But if we move to the six month trend, you can see right here, it got up to 273 during the regular season and they weren't playing very good baseball guys they were not playing very good baseball he hit 13 home runs hit 268 had an ops of 962 not too shabby he's already though an mvp a silver slugger and a six-time all-star so if i'm looking at him this is one of those long-term pickups i do realize though this is the rookie debut again the problem with bryce harper rookie cards is there's just so many of them it's hard to nail down which one we should be investing in but if i go with historical analysis this is the one that i think a lot of investors are getting into rookie debuts typically don't do so well but for whatever reason maybe it's the red jersey maybe it's that it's tops update too that could definitely be a thing but whatever the reason it seems to be the one that collectors and investors alike are gravitating towards now this is up 16 percent but i see bryce harper and i look at that phillies team not necessarily as a world series contender but i could definitely see him having a huge year this year jt romuto's back and i mean it's just going to be a fun season for him he's always just crushed the ball he's a doubles machine he will often give you 30 home runs and 100 rbis and an ops of above 900 i know a lot of people don't like the fact that his batting average career is only 276 but you got to look at him beyond the batting average because he is so much more he's a great fielder he's got a good arm and i mean he's so polarizing i like that in a player when i invest in guys i want them to be outspoken i want them to kind of want the limelight of course he's got the classic quote of like clown question bro and he's gotten in fights and honestly i think some of those fights he's gotten the bad rap for but if you look at it and you dig into some of those stories he uh he wasn't really the instigator so i really like him and he's gonna be number two on today's list bryce harper and last, a guy who had a very rough season last year, but was still able to win a World Series. It's going to be Cody Bellinger. Now this card, the 2017 Tops Update PSA 10 swinging, went absolutely nutty last year. Right before the season started, this card 
went to the moon and i couldn't believe it i sold mine a little bit early i think last season but the prices obviously have chilled off because last year he didn't have a great year he only had 12 home runs he hit 239 and only had an OPS of 789. That is extremely off for him, but he was coming off of an MVP season. He was a rookie of the year. He's a two-time All-Star, a gold glover, an NLCS MVP, silver slugger. And of course, last year they did win the World Series. So I'm really, really high on him. Hopefully he can figure the things out at the plate that he needs to, to get back on track. But the fact that the Dodgers were able to win the World Series basically with Cody not being himself, not hitting belly bombs, not hitting ham sandwiches like he normally does is a true testament how excellent that team is. Obviously, they just signed Trevor Bauer and I mean, they have to be favorites to win the World Series again. And I really do think Cody Bellinger is going to be a huge and crucial role to them winning the world series the start price back on 813 304 dollars okay and you got to remember last year was way different than most years for baseball cards we never seen guys reach these heights that weren't like rock solid hall of famers its current price is only 185 bucks okay so that's pretty dang cheap the high price was that 315 um, at the end of August, early September. But over the last six months, it's lost 39%. So I think this is a good time to buy it because as we saw with the stimulus checks, anytime that there is a stimulus check in America, prices spike. And right now, this card is kind of in a lull. So I would get in and I really expect them to have a great season. This card could be iconic if he continues his awesome run with the Dodgers. And obviously he's an MVP, he's a World Series winner. He's checked a lot of boxes. You know, all the players right now, last season kind of was a big hit to their overall production, like counting stats. So, you know, he's got 123 career home runs. He's 25 years old, so not yet in the prime of his career technically. I really look at Cody Bellinger and I really think he could be a Hall of Fame player. A little bit too early to say whether he is, but... I definitely think he's on the right path. But yeah, Cody Bellinger going to be number one on today's list. All right, guys, there you have it. There are my top five picks for outfielders that I am looking at to invest for next season that I'm picking up right now. If you guys enjoyed this one, again, smash that like button. It really, really does mean so much to the channel and helps me grow. We are approaching 5,000 subscribers, which is totally awesome i appreciate each and every single one of you you're all amazing if you made it this far hit that subscribe button join the team get in that comment section let's talk it up is there any snubs now i do want to say i realize the best outfielder the best player in baseball didn't make the list it's just too expensive mike trout the 2011 tops update is just it's too expensive i didn't want to put it on the list i think like it would have probably doing my viewers a disservice because it's right around that six to seven thousand dollar mark for psa 10s which is pff, absolutely mind-blowing but i'm really really excited for this list i think i nailed it down let me know what you guys think though in the comment section down there if you guys want to join a community of like-minded card connoisseurs be sure to join the Les Alex Discord. I'll leave that in a pinned comment down there. And if you're shopping for sports cards on eBay, make sure to use my eBay affiliate link. It'll be in the description. You can check that out. Click on it, go shopping. And if you buy something, I get a small kickback and it's a really great way to help support the content here on the channel. I appreciate you all. I'm so happy that I was able to complete this series before the season got started. And I will be doing my series coming up. Best pickups for each team by division. I did it last year. You guys can check that out from last year because honestly, a lot of them are still relevant to this day. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want to chat more or just join the Discord. I'm always down to talk to the folks in Discord. Also, there'll be some suggested videos right after this. You can check those out. And I appreciate you all. Until next time, keep cracking packs, keep collecting. I will see you all in the next one.